Welcome to the MedReady screencast video that will show you how to log into your device and manage it till its full potential. The first thing you want to do is log in using the unit ID that's on the bottom of the unit and on the, the long side of the box. Use the password that was given to you and sign in. Now that was a long number. So the first thing you want to do is find an easier way to log in. And the way you do that is you come up to my account. And you put in your email. So let's say your name is John and you have an email at john at gmail.com. You could go ahead and put in your name. And if you wanted to change in your password here, you could do that too. You have to have your current password to change your change it to a new password. And then log in. What this does now is if we log out of here and log in as John we come to the same place and we're still assigned to that same unit so now it's a lot easier for you to log in you can don't have to remember much except for your email ID simple as that let's go to my device there's six tabs first tab is a summary and it describes everything from IP addresses to database values and and such. The, the main thing that you want to look at over here is uh, the current status of important features. Uh, the AC power is on, the unit is active, the alarm lengths, whether or not the audio and visual alarms are active, um, the chirp, how many doses are remaining, whether or not it's malfunctioning, the signal strength and the standard load. The one thing we'll talk about all of those, what they mean shortly, but the signal strength is something that is very important. The max signal strength that you can have is 24. And if it's, it'll work all the way down to around six. Six is about borderline. So if you look on your signal strength, which gets updated after each event gets submitted from the device to the server, it sends up what signal strength it has. If it's hovering around six, you might want to locate that device closer to a window and then see what kind of signal strength that does to it. But really the higher number, the better and the better chance that you'll have of, uh, of succeeding in, in transmitting data back and forth between. All right, let's move on to the device settings. If you hover over, as soon as you would click on one of these, it will send an event down to the device and we'll look at each one of these and what it means now remember here the first time you're going to update it it's going to take about 30 seconds to 45 seconds and in some cases maybe even up to a minute for this first event to make it to the device and while that's happening you'll see that these are grayed out and it'll say waiting and waiting and that's okay just be patient and let it come back once it comes back, then whatever you've clicked on has updated and you're good to go to the next one. From that point on, any update that you want to do will be sent down almost instantaneously. And if it's inactive for 20 minutes, then that minute wait will then reapply. Okay, so basically it stays listening for about 20 minutes after you've uh, sent down the first event. Very good. Um, active. If you want to make this inactive, what, what that does is it shows the display on the device. The display will sh show off. Um, many people do this when they need to go into the hospital or need to go on a trip. Go, go someplace uh, and they don't want the unit to dispense. It'll still maintain all of the settings. It just will not dispense or alarm at those times. So if you want to make that inactive, press that. The alarm length. Factory setting is 30 minutes. You can change this from 3 minutes up to 250 minutes. What this is, it sends, uh, it, when, when the medication rotates, the alarm will sound. And it will sound for this long, for 30 minutes. And then after that 30 minutes, it will uh, send a notification to whoever you want it to via text email, or phone calls. Simple as that. Chirp enabled. 
if after 30 minutes the person doesn't take their medication if you want the unit can chirp once per minute just like a low battery smoke alarm until they take their medication as soon as they slide that door open it will not chirp anymore all right the audio alerts you can individually update audio and visual so you can shut them off keep them on whatever you'd like doses remaining and standard load what happens here is if you normally fill the device up and have 28 doses in there then you would leave this at 28 every time you fill up the device whoever does should press the time set button which is uh, lower left and the button right next to it to the right which is the alarm one button to press those hold those down until the time on the clock flashes a couple of times and what that does it'll set the remaining doses to 28 basically telling us that the unit is full and that's basically what it'll do if you forget to do that when you get home you can go in here and edit that just like I did change it to whatever let's say you only had 26 you can update it and there you go it's 26 every time that tray rotates it'll decrement that number by one it'll also on another tab over here calculate based upon how many doses per day and it divides that by the doses remaining and it'll give you how many days are left very simple notifications if you uh, want to be notified that somebody didn't take their medication you can put in emails SMS messages and text notifications here simply add a new notification click on email type save it there you go well I said it if I want to edit it uh-huh looks like we're not ed editing just yet but you can delete it and create a, a new one and do test three and then test three is there you want to do a new new notification you can uh, do a text message or SMS put in the phone number choose that carrier for that phone number save the notification and that person will get a text also okay the last thing you can put an automated phone call message out there and you can save it so after the 30 minutes what would happen here is these three emails and an SMS would get sent immediately and then it would call this number and say the there's been a medication non-compliance the medication remains in the machine for device ending in one two three four five six press one to acknowledge this call if you press one it stops and it does not call anybody else in this case there's only one phone number but if there were several phone numbers like this then what it would do would it would go to the next phone number and try to get that it'll keep going to it until somebody presses a one or until it ends the amount of uh, phones that are listed here so if there's two here it'll try twice all right so the alarms are here and this is how you would edit it so if you set up the device and you set up all of the alarms here then all of those alarms that you set on the device itself physically will get pushed up here and it'll match if you change up here it'll get sent down to the device also so they stay in sync that way very good so if you wanted to edit that and let's say you wanted to set the alarm to 8:30 in the morning you would simply come over here 8:30, make it active you can even put in uh, what a meds you have and then you'd come over here and save it I'm not going to save the alarm because what it's going to do is going to go up for 30 to 45 seconds and try to update this device which is a fictitious device anyway so it would fail so I'm not going to do that instead I'm going to cancel and keep in mind that if active is yes that tray will rotate if active is no then it will not rotate even though it has a uh, time over here let's say you've set all these times right and it's all good to go if this says no it will not rotate so in this case 
no 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 the only thing it really is it's a clock it's the the, uh, the med ready will just become a clock it will not rotate or dispense any meds until one of these are active just like i said now alarm test you uh, can you know most people do this at the beginning when they're first getting your units to see if it works in this type of thing but if you press this it'll tell you okay i'm going to rotate the slot one time you should probably only do this uh if if somebody's there so they can take the medication tray and put it back one slot because what this will do is it'll move it forward and it'll just test the, the the rotation function but if it's all set up and this thing's been working for a few days and it's and it's going strong if you rotate this then what will happen is that medication will be out of sync by one it'll be one ahead so dose um uh, so so if you think you're getting dose one you're really getting dose two because it's already dispensed so what you want to do is be careful not to uh change the integrity of the medication in in the device and only use this uh, when you want to test it the early dose great feature uh, what happens here is let's say the medication is due at six o'clock but you want this person to have the medication at three o'clock because they need to leave and go someplace well you can come over here click early dose what will happen is that tray will rotate the dose will become available they will take it and a light will start blinking above the number one button on the medication dispenser itself that you know, signifying that it's a early dose when that lights blinking what will happen is the next dose when it comes around the six o'clock dose the tray will not rotate because it has already rotated the only thing that will happen is that flashing light will stop blinking indicating that the early dose is over and so the next scheduled dose let's say it's at 9 p.m uh, it'll rotate and come into play simple as that very very handy you can do that from afar um, cancel early dose is a little tricky you know if you forward the dose once by doing an early dose and that light is flashing well you can stop that light from flashing here but keep in mind that that is now now has rotated one spot and just like the alarm test it could be out of sync so make sure that uh, you know you you know exactly what you're doing when you're playing with these features very good uh, schedule this is a week by week I'm gonna jump into a live unit here shortly and we're going to uh, look at what this actually means the log tab will be actual uh, all almost uh, raw events that are coming and you can kind of just see what's going on so let's go out we'll log out here and we'll go into a live a live unit let's see here now yeah, let's do it this way and I go into device management and I'm going to find there and we're going to look at the schedule for this case let's jump back to the alarms for this case currently there's only one alarm active even though there's three times set only one alarm active that thing will only rotate at 3 30 in the afternoon once per day looks like this has just been changed because when i look at the schedule and look at the last week it looks like up until this point there has been up to three alarms so the way this reads is, let's look at Wednesday here. At 7.59 it was scheduled, at 8 o'clock they took their medication and it was on time because of the color green. Here's another one at 3.30, I mean sorry, at 3.59 it was scheduled. And at 6.07 they finally took it, it was late. Uh, there was It was at 30 minutes, so past the 30 minutes it's going to be yellow. But they still took it and you can see when they took it here. If they never took it and this eight o'clock alarm here happened then or the 759 happened what would happen is this would be red showing that they physically missed that dose makes sense right so um it's no longer available it, it would have rotated out of the way looks like they've been completely compliant here they've taken their medication uh, on monday it looks like they've they've narrowed it down to one alarm only uh, at at around 3.30 and they've taken the dose at around 3.30 and everything's on time. And this last section is the log. 
this is basically the raw event log going back and forth uh, basically we can look at this and troubleshoot anything and you can see what's actually going back and forth if at any time you want to clear the log data and start over and to start fresh you can also do that uh, keep in mind you won't be able to get that data back it'll be gone so at any time if you think that there should be something else here and let's say you're looking at it right now and the you think that they just took their meds and the event should have gone up here and you don't see it well what you can always come up here and do is refresh the device and the new data will show up that is all there is to the user level if you have any questions you can give us a call and we'll be glad to help you uh, thank you very much for watching the MedReady screencast video.